Well, hello. It is your favorite RuneScape new back at it again. Well, I just decided that I'm your favorite now. You're welcome. And our hero has been through a lot recently, hasn't he? Evident through all these beautiful numbers here. But if we take a closer look, there are numbers that haven't been evolved as much as others. So once again, this little pixel guy will be moving out into the world. Once again, trying to conquer the unknown, defy the odds, and in the end, hopefully grow stronger in the form of bigger numbers, you know, as it should be. Because guess what? Yes, I once again, I have a plan. <laughs> and said plan is actually very simple. And I'll explain it to you in detail just in a second. But it pretty much all boils down to there's only one logical thing to do next. So welcome to the ranged art. And I think this time I'm starting at the beginning. Wow, crazy. Because I have to make a confession. I made a little bit of a mistake. You see I'm using OBS to record Bad Sibis heroics. And there's these buttons that you have to press. And in a unusual moment of carelessness, instead of start recording, I was somehow pressing accidentally start streaming. And apparently this now live streams the footage onto a website called Twitch TV slash flip was taken, which also has a certain effect on the game as it apparently slightly alters the gameplay. So if you happen to see something unusual from here on forth, uh, yeah, well, that's why. Silly me. How could that happen? Well, anyways, how the hell did I end up becoming Legolas? The answer to that is somewhat simple, actually. I spent a reasonable amount of time brainstorming here at the Varrock Bank, which means I was pretty much just clicking through all the skills that I haven't done yet to somehow figure out how they actually work. And if we ignore my runecrafting adventures from earlier, the only ones left are ranged and magic. The former seems to be much easier as you simply just pick up a bow and a bunch of arrows and well that's it. You then start left clicking the guys again. The latter requires a bit more resources but then again is also the one that all of you urged me to progress reasonably soon as teleports are unlocked through it. Might actually be the number one requested thing over multiple episodes now and if that isn't reason enough to start with ranged well I have a better one and after careful consideration I came up with the plan of starting with ranged making myself my own leather armor once again as I have sold all my other pieces because I did not expect to actually ever need them again. Once I gained enough dopamine points I would then pivot over getting revenge on a certain group of wizards all the while farming gear and runes that I will then later use for the magic skill. Well so much for the theory. I had worse plans at certain point I even had no plan so I am somewhat actually fairly proud of this one. So I kept fully exploring the range tab most notably you have to first throw money at at the game to be allowed to throw things in the game but other than that the next step of action was fairly clear get myself my bow and arrow head out into the world and well let's once again hunt some cows so our ranged journey begins with a quick trip to the general store to find out this is not where we buy equipment which was a blunder once again presented to you by i can't fucking read because i somehow managed while looking at the list of shops to overlook the archery shop because i was looking for bows and arrows <laughs> i don't even i have no excuse for this one to be honest anyways i'm stocking up on arrows and here comes a twist i'm looking ahead and i'm already buying the bow i will be able to use once i hit level five wow i'm more and more proud of this plan to be honest the execution as per usual might be lacking a little bit but oh well i get the rest of my stuff and this time we are actually off off to a little bit of a familiar location as it's been a long time since I've been here and I never expected that simply entering a measly field of cows would bring up a wave of nostalgia actually. But then again, after all, this is exactly the place where pretty much everything started. Not just the series, but also my RuneScape journey. Well, that's technically the same. And it's kind of nice that you can just relive that by simply switching the way you kill pixel guys in the game. I like that. But enough with talking about the past. Let's get to the action. Where, as per usual, action is quite the stretch. Especially given in the beginning, neither me nor the cows are actually really hitting each other. But after a bit over half a minute, and later I can report my first ranged kill. Things are pretty much as they always are, but you actually have to pick up your arrows every time. Not so sure how I feel about that just yet. On the one hand, there is, you know, the Cape Empire entrepreneur in me who definitely enjoys the fact that they're not gone and we get them back. But then there's also lazy normal me who really would rather not pick stuff up and kill someone else meanwhile, but oh well. I then find out that bows also have combat styles. I mean, why wouldn't they? But it's something that I really didn't consider 
consider initially. And what follows is I guess another little side effect of streaming. I follow the people's advice and pick Rapid, as allegedly that is much better. And just one little bit of a test run, which took a whole two minutes and actually only got better once I switched back to normal attack mode, I learned that following the advice of a stream, that might not be the best move, which is actually the opposite of what I expected this to be, as I was pretty much lining up with you guys' concerns that yeah, having a bunch of backseat guys in the chat might not be the best thing, but turns out, A, <laughs> you guys don't know shit either, or you're not telling me, maybe that's actually what happened, but more importantly, which I personally am even more amazed by, there are actually no spoilers in chat to begin with. Very well behaved ones you are. Impressive. And mainly really just actually very surprising. But that might just once again be because of my bad choice of prior communities. But I'm kind of tired of repeating that I guess. Just glad to be here I think. And I think all I really want to say is that accurate style is way better than rapid. No clue what you guys are talking about. I even did some further up tests later on because let's be honest the chance of me somehow doing something wrong is definitely way too high. And I even abused that mechanic where now there's even less happening actually because now the cow is not even able to fight back so yeah that's that's necessary regardless result is the same rapid is indeed faster but it, you don't hit for shit but you do that faster i guess so with that mystery solved, there was nothing standing in the way of my progression. So I start gathering dopamine points, I start gathering my arrows that are on the floor, which again, really fun mechanic. I gather cowhide, and I am once again pleasantly surprised, or rather actually reminded of the fact that, oh yeah, Adventurer John exists, whose rewards are ever helpful. So I have to craft one less leather piece, and oh yeah, me thinking ahead and buying that bow, was actually useless. Nice! I'll never think ahead again. If anyone asks, this is why, and not because of other reasons. But I won't let this little bit of bad news bring down my joyful cow massacre. As you know, this is utterly satisfying. So let's keep moving along, as I, well, keep leveling up with bovine casualties. Alright, that's some cow puns for the pun lovers. And as fun as all of that is, I eventually have to stop my cow carnage, as one of my little side quests kind of self-proclaimed, is at hand given that my inventory is full of cowhide now. And due to my past troubles, I know exactly where to go now. And speaking of past troubles, I'm crossing the gate for free because, well, no more tolls for me. I really want to apologize for the past minute. I'm doing a thing where I'm raising awareness for YouTubers making videos while being sleep deprived. Don't do it, or else you start doing dumb rhymes, weird puns, or you're naming things cow carnage or uh, milk mayhem or uh, I don't know okay enough of that let's actually move on a pun unintended I swear and go more into a direction of recycling as we honor the sacrifice the cows made by creating something beautiful so they can live on in a different form you might even say that they're hiding in plain sight okay that one was on purpose maybe the last one I don't know I should really go to bed maybe but one thing's for sure I'm definitely getting way too sidetracked so First and foremost, I realized that I did look up the level requirement for hard leather armor incorrectly. No surprise there. After then double checking what kind of equipment I need, I tan myself three light leather. And realizing that the other one sells better, I fill the rest of my inventory with hard leather. My entrepreneurial spirit definitely shining through on this one. Because within a crafting level approach, that move made no sense. Oh yeah, and speaking of moves that make no sense, me then trying to craft my of my hand gear ends up being me crafting a whole handful because I didn't check the box that only makes one. That not only making my recent cow chaos almost obsolete, it also heavily minors the amount of profit I could have made out of this, but once again is definitely in sync with my do things first before thinking approach that I have in this game for some reason. Well fine, back to some more steak slaughter it is. So let's gather some more of the cow hide again, and I'm also gathering some higher numbers when I throw the arrows at the guy with the cow things you know but I am also gathering a rather colorful entourage of people and I guess we've now reached a point of well slightly altered gameplay when you're streaming which leaves 
a lot of questions. Is this fun? Is a line mandatory? What are all the other people thinking actually seeing this whole thing happen? But then I think the most ordinary question might be actually the most important to answer. Why? And I think I've come up with a pretty good theory. At least I hope so. Sure, you could say MMO Endgame might not be the most exciting stuff usually. Or instead of sitting around in a city, you're now sitting around in a starter area field watching, well, a guy kill cows. But what I haven't considered for the longest time is this might actually be the most interactive way of watching a stream. As I considered everyone here is actually playing the game but to be honest I think all of these guys are merely just watching the stream but in game. Which is actually a really cool concept. Consider your game technically being your streaming platform and the in-game chat more or less being the streaming chat. Essentially Twitch TV with better graphics. Especially considering that all of you play with these fancy graphic plugins. Well, or alternatively, all of you are just super bored. Which explains why my archery project now has project managers, why I listen to maybe questionable advice and don't pick arrows up automatically, apparently, and why I eventually find out why this happens when, well, everyone kind of follows each other. So all in all, definitely time well spent by everyone. The only small raid boss is the gate, as everyone has to kind of get through it by themselves now, but oh well. Bigger hurdles have been overcome. I even craft myself the correct pieces this time, and it's back to work with my ever-growing train of project managers. My strength is slowly growing in numbers, and well so is the number of train participants, or wagons I guess. And my efforts are rewarded with me finally having pants. Nice, I think. And after the game then tells me to go to the crafting tutor in the Lumbridge castle, as there is more information available, just to find out one conversation later that there really isn't, I knew that it was time for a change of scenery. A change of pace, really. I have definitely acquired the style for it now, which, um, yeah, not quite digging the archery so far when it comes to the stylistics of it, but shooting things from afar is definitely fun. So our cow conundrum comes to an end, and so does the rhythmical back and forth between gathering cowhide and making stuff out of it. And all the while, you know, dopamine points. More importantly, this is the departure of this colorful train towards the unknown. After all, we are training for bigger and better things. So full steam ahead, because I used the steam launcher and not that fancy other thing. And all aboard the Archery Express. And also looking at all of this, I now know why it's called Locomotive. Alright, that's some train puns for the pun lovers. But enough of that. I have an empire to build. Yep, I am back on my bullshit. And that doesn't only mean running around a tree with a bunch of people, it also means I will be dragging exactly those people into me very inefficiently farming random capes, just so I can uphold the idea of a cape empire being mine. But oh well, you gotta do what you got to do, right? This is actually a very good analogy of getting onto the wrong train. It will take you somewhere, but this is definitely not where you want to be. And so it happens that all of this nonsense here only interrupts by some guy spawning so I can kill him. It had something good to it though as well as I learned that a safe spotting, you know as us roomscape professionals call it, also works with other players actually. I mean obviously, I'm just saying that so you also know that of course. Which led to a very interesting dynamic of me just clicking the next best guy and everyone else actually playing the game trying to run in between me and the opponent so I wouldn't get hit, you know, obviously. So I guess we're kind of over the whole train metaphor and more into something like worker bees protecting their queen or something. And then a cat kidnapped me. And I get to travel to Evil Bob's Island. I have to admit it did take me a little bit, but the catch of this place is you're kind of doing things in reverse. So we start with catching a already cooked fish, which the guy obviously doesn't want because, oh god, no, it's cooked. So we first have to use the uncooking pot to uncook the already already cooked fish. I mean, obviously, right? Feeding that to the cat makes it fall asleep and we can finally escape this place. Me then in my usual heroic fashion, trying to save the half-naked lady and declaring my love to her, as per usual, doesn't quite 
end too well for me. Guess I finally found something I'm not a noob in. Fantastic. Guess we'll leave this place and unsure who this gesture is actually pointed to. Is it the cat that kidnapped me and held me prisoner or, well, a half-naked lady? I guess we'll never know. Besides that, definitely one of the better of these kidnapping events. And I say that without being sponsored by the fishing XP this event gave me. But level 20 at fishing means I'm level 20 at fishing. Also being back in the front wards runescape turns out the analogy of those guys being a worker bee might have maybe possibly after all not been faulty. Which is maybe the dumbest way of saying that there were two capes on the floor that might have been the doing of someone else and not me. I don't know what the runescape equivalent to the Asmongold experience is but well I guess that's that. So with coming back to the point made earlier so far streaming my whole experience is definitely different but I wouldn't say in any way worse. And to prove that to you a bit more detailed maybe, first of all all these people are still here for some reason despite me doing pretty much nothing, but I tried my go at subliminal messaging again as I once did with the fire making skill. This time the mechanic is a little bit different. We are not placing fire on the ground, we're using and leveraging my viewers to advertise my channel. Nothing wrong with that I think, but how do we do that? I will be using my everybody follows everybody mechanic from earlier and by pretty much playing in-game snake I will write the letters once again. Given that I'm in charge this once again took way longer than it should have which is a further testament that the viewers are really the strong part of this video. Maybe my channel really? So yeah round of applause it's actually all you guys but merely a few barely painful minutes later may I present to you ladies and gentlemen the S which was horrible. Learning from that and stacking people up brings us the U. We're still lacking a little bit of coordination, so let's try this again. And if you look really close, you can definitely see this being the B. Insert worker B joke here. Then we kind of got our shit together and pulled of a beautiful C, just for me to then completely butcher the R. It's a little bit too small, maybe. We flawlessly execute the hardest one and do a crazy I. Finally, all that is left, the E. And if you have way too much imagination, and put all of these together, you might want to subscribe to my channel. Please, I obviously need the help. Well, I might need other help, but that's beyond the point. But my original point, definitely proven, it's all you guys. The fact that people actually sat through this 20 minute of me not getting this done properly, that is not bad. And then I got level 20 and of course finished the adventurer task, which I obviously didn't forget about. Just after that, I kill my very last highwayman for now, pick up the last cape, for now, and it's time for me to move on. Where to? Well, initially the bank, because, well, my inventory is full, but now that I have a bunch of people governing my every move, I might as well let them do that, no? And so it happened that while I was doing my banking business, all of my countless CEOs and project managers were holding a very productive meeting, and we as a group decided that I would really love to do some quests now, apparently. But not just any quest. Through clever hints and ominous messages, I end up doing, well, I guess as we are calling it, Roddick's quest. Well, little explanation maybe, given that it always takes me way too long to get new videos out, most of you might have forgotten that the hint of my current clue scroll being a anagram which I assumed could be Roddick mostly for the lack of pretty much any other idea. But turns out, surprisingly it wasn't. Who would have thought? It was Doric all along, who ever since has been waiting here for my arrival of, of me and the CEO train, eager to hand me seven egg runes and four question mark runes. The game pricing those at 938 coins means I was just cashing in big time. Then again, well, questionable monetary gains aside, these clue scrolls so far have definitely been, despite my complete incompetence of solving them, one of my most favorite parts of this game actually. Maybe that is because everything started with it, but definitely looking forward for some more. But first, conversation. Sure, I would have loved to further go down that selfish path of increasing my wealth 900 
138 coins at a time, but I am Bat Sibis, a hero who is jumping the gun to help the ones in need, like this poor fella here. And once again, too long didn't read. Essentially, this guy is a smith and whatever conversation option we're choosing, he tells us something about a dwarven mine nearby. Given that none of this started the quest, I assume that was merely a hint to go there first. Maybe the actual starting point is there. A short little walk later, we make it to the mine, but I'm not quite sure what exactly I'm looking for. Hovering everyone and everything is not really making it any better and also isn't bringing up the name that the guy just told me. So naturally the answer must be down here, right? Well, there are answers down here, but definitely to way different questions. For example, I do answer the where the hell is clay question. I'm also kind of answering the question if this is the place we need to go to. Well, because surprisingly, once again, it really isn't. But as is tradition, I'm also adding a lot of questions like what the hell is this? Why is everyone allowed in here but me? And do I really want to know what's in that box in the middle? So yeah, exciting visit as per usual, not productive though. Because one more foot walk later, turns out I didn't do the conversation correctly. Yes, apparently that's a thing. And no, I really don't know what I did wrong. I also kind of don't care, to be honest. I'm just adding another question to my list, I think. Uh, how are people still not tired of this? Following me back and forth. Now watching all my pain unfold live, which takes a multitude longer than it takes in the video. But guess I'll just not question it because, well, I'm happy to have company on my endless nonsense walks. So thanks, I guess. So one more stroll later, we are actually back here because, I mean, I obviously knew that all along, you guys. I have to do another shopping list, yes. But me, as per usual, being ahead of my time, obviously, was clearly sensing that earlier that I needed to go here to get my myself a bunch of ores. And a bunch of ores later, we are going on another hike and are delivering the good news. The good news being the ores essentially. And I could only believe it once it actually happened. That was the whole quest. And if we ignore the part where I of course made it twice as long as it should have been, this might have actually been the first very short quest as advertised. Easiest mining XP of my life. And I could have just called it a day here. I just had a win. For some reason there's hundreds of capes on the floor. And overall a positive vibe. But I think exactly this positivity and success roped me back in. I was almost motivated to do more. So I looked at the map and saw that the mountain area we've just been at is the starting point for yet another quest. Self-proclaimed archaeologist Willow, who apparently found an ancient door to forgotten ruins or something like that, of course needs our help. Who else of course but me? We are starting the Below the Ice Mountain quest, which once again requires a very moderate amount of walking. As in order to get into the ruins, we need a little bit of help as the door is blocked by stone and there is a bunch of tasks required. Good news, Willow once had a crew, but they're not too keen on helping out, so we might need to bring some additional incentive maybe. Which is pretty much RuneScape's way of telling me it's not gonna be as easy as just walking up to the guys and saying, yo, let's go. Number one, and going to be in charge of explosives, a drunken dwarf named Burntoff. Talking to him reveals a little bit of a falling out in the past with Willow and and also makes us question whether archaeology is really what's going on here. But as is tradition, this information was only gained after bribing the guy with even more alcohol. And while I was at it, you know, around on the house or brought up on the carpet, as this is where I dropped drinks for everyone that was somehow still here, despite their better judgment, most likely. Anyways, all of that leads us to a rock, paper, scissors match. If we win, he will join our endeavor. Given the fact that the dwarf was only very slightly inebriated. Yeah, it was a whole mess. First he kind of fumbled what is winning against what and then it only got better by us eventually winning the whole thing by just quickly changing our answer. So yeah, overall great success. We secure our first crew member right here. Guy gets something more to drink, so everyone's happy I guess. And I am back to walking. All the way to the flexing naked guy we've seen before. All that happens here really is a almost three minute long training montage which pretty sure it's poking fun at some movie or something the idea of it being he only helps us if we are also willing to be strong like him and given that I can achieve that by watching a three-minute movie I'm okay with that and after me training my heart out 
I was on my way to bring him the good news when there was suddenly this guy bothering me. The fact that right after the training montage I find myself in another training mini game. Yeah, if anyone is still questioning whether we are living in a simulation or not, I think it's proven once and for all right here. Anyways, I cash in a absolutely stunning army piece and after flexing in front of the flexing naked guy, he accepts us as one of his peers, which I don't know if I want to be proud about that, but I guess at least I'm joining the gym bro culture in a video game, I mean that's something. It's the closest of sport activities I get, so I'll take it. And we take the naked flexing guy into our group. Two down, one more to go. And time for us to go, you know, like this. Anyways, it's time for another Bad Sibis classic. I am not properly reading the instructions and I am looking for Charlie inside of the Blue Moon Inn. Anyone playing the game knows that, well, that's definitely not where I would ever find the guy. And even if you don't play the game, if you read properly it clearly states somewhere near the inn. So a little bit of involuntary detour later. I not only question how did I even pass kindergarten, but I also got to know a bunch of other people, but most importantly, we get to know Charlie the Tramp, who is located, if you are ever looking for him, somewhere near the Blue Moon Inn. Thank you for watching my RuneScape location guide. Anyways, the whole reason we have to talk to Charlie is because he can now tell us where Marley is. How, how fantastic. They really worked hard on the names, didn't they? A change of paces, uh, we get the information without any further tasks. Then again, technically speaking, I made it a further task to even find that guy to begin with, but that's more of a me problem once again. So, my clever paper tells me that we will find him in the Edgewell Ruins, which brings me to a rare 200 IQ move. I activate roofs again, so I can locate a rather ruined area in the back of the town or city or whatever you call this. And wouldn't you know, it's Marley. Sadly, the only willow he knows is a type of tree but we might be able to help his memory. Or in other words, we have to go back to the Blue Moon Inn, where he obviously isn't allowed to enter due to, well, him being criminal and everything, to get him a steak sandwich. Well, fine, given my once again prior investigations, let's call them, I'm a professional when it comes to this place. But if you thought this is where we would actually get some food, well, nah, of course not. Me mentioning the name Marley made the cook not too cooperative, but he is willing to give us the recipe. As after all, we merely need a steak and bread. Guess that's already a sandwich around here. Regardless, as faith has it, we are pretty much just going back where everything started. Also, a reoccurring theme whenever I do anything in this game. Interesting. So I put all of my hours spent optimizing my bow craft, especially when it comes to killing cows to work. And yeah, I, I, I kill one and I take its meat. And then I see this nice guy already preparing some fire for me. And I surprise surprisingly burn the meat. Of course I do. Well, one attempt later, it actually works out. Moving on to the bread, something I've never done before. At least so I thought, but I just checked. Actually, it's part of the tutorial, but I have completely forgotten about it. Me on top of that, completely ignoring the instructions on this page, made me go with a I'll deduct it from real life approach. My assumption that we will definitely need wheat wasn't too far off, obviously. But thank God the double check of the cooking tab made me now realize that there is a step by step. And I'm pretty sure there would have been no way that I could have figured that out without it taking many hours, I think. So naturally, step number one is me confirming that this is how I would have made soft clay back when I needed it. And I was technically correct. Then we get some flour, mix that with water to get some dough, making some banger bread out of that. After almost actually eating that stuff, I thank God right click so I can combine the two into a steak sandwich. At least so I thought. But this time we actually have to be a little bit less video game and a bit more real life and actually cut up the bread. So let's just walk over to the store real quick. Uh, why are people running ahead? And how are the knives sold out in the store? A weird coincidence. Guess those are those streamer benefits everyone's always talking about. Well it had something good as well. I snacked myself an incredible deal while I was waiting. I don't know if I did that because I genuinely wanted to sell these for a profit or if I was just really bored. Anyways, I bought a knife to finally complete the step of 
steak sandwich. Definitely had to overcome the urge of pressing eat again, but the last half an hour of time invested got the better of me, so I'm actually able to feed the guy. And apparently the sandwich was that good, Marley joins the team. And we plan to meet up at the west side of Ice Mountain. And I'll now further convince you guys right after this conversation, a sandwich lady spawns. I think this clears anything once and for all. Unsure if I should be afraid or amazed, but I thank God have no time to think about this. There is urgent business. So I join the rest of our, well, quite colorful crew, and we go right to work. And just as planned, a drunken dwarf blows up the door. Next up, naked flexing guy carries away the rubble. Last button least, Marley disabling ancient traps. Apparently he knows how that works. And all of our work finally paying off. And we enter whatever this hall is. Willow then revealing to us it has always been about the money, pretty much confirming what has been hinted at us all along. We weren't doing archaeology at all. We are now part of a group of grave robbers. And just as I was about to be silenced forever, this pile of stones suddenly became a guy. The group is then debating why each and every one of them is not able to deal with this, and they simply decide to book it. And just like that, I'm thrown into a boss fight. As you can see my inventory not too much emergency fish ready but i have a lot of emergency swords i guess additional bad news might be well good old combat triangle i hit for pretty much nothing while the boss hits for well almost everything which very quickly shows that the only reasonable course of action is we follow the guys which uh, brings us back outside and that definitely not being the end i expected so well good news maybe we have to defeat this thing to actually end the quest for real so let's try this thing again with a little bit of a different look to myself and some stolen fish from my most favorite Spanish fishing spot. Funny enough, this time around when I try to enter the cave, the game warns me of the insides. Oh, how nice. But then throws us right back into the action. What follows is potentially the most exciting fight yet. I don't get hit at all and I barely hit the other guy. I don't need any fish in the process and... I'm merely just waiting for this to be eventually over. And as much of an exciting boss fight I was expecting really, this just came down to another I left click once and then wait two minutes for it to unfold itself. Which, well it did. And heroically, or something uh, like that, I do slay the stone monstrosity. I do get myself my own quest reward by simply taking stuff from the bags the guys left and thinking that, well we're done here now. Not quite yet. There's a little bit of an earthquake happening. And with further suspense, the camera slowly pans to the right, revealing yeah, about this guy, who was caged inside the ruins and, due to our heroics, is now free. And this ending the cutscene, and also ending the quest, but the best is yet to come. As you might see the background, and as you might also be a little bit confused as I was, I get my own little cutscene from you guys. And pretty much the train that was following me all around for the past few hours, celebrating this massive success with a flap in you. Unison. That was definitely the last thing I expected coming out of this cutscene, so much appreciated, guys. And all of this makes it a mere footnote that I get a bunch of coins and I get access to some ruins, but more on that eventually. For now, I want to thank everyone who made this very first RuneScape stream a very special one. And for once, I mean that in a good way, I think. As despite all the worries that pretty much everyone shared, this was an amazing experience and made my journey even better and definitely way more memorable. And given that nature of how things usually go around here, this could have also been a massive disaster. I'm very much pleased and happy with the outcome. And given that so many people stuck around till the end, I might just assume watching me suffer live apparently doesn't seem to be that bad either. So for everyone that missed it, I'll leave the VOD down below as long as it's still up. And I will see you guys soon, which, well, maybe two or three years for the next video, right? Where we will be entering these ruins, I'm sure.